Today's video is a fun way to show you dynamic arrays, XLOOKUP, and conditional formatting, and a few other elements. If you haven't heard of the game Wordle yet, it's a very addictive little word guessing game. You've got a different word each day. You've got six guesses to guess the five letter word. If you get a letter right and in the right spot, it goes green. If you get a letter right but in the wrong spot, it goes yellow. And if you get all letters right, so let me just type this in. Success. You get a little table here showing you different letters you've selected and a little result that you can share with someone. So Wordle is an online game invented by a Welsh guy, so I thought I'd do an Excel version and show you a few Excel tricks along the way. And the great thing is, there's not actually that many formulas involved. Let's go. So I'm going to show you the basics of how I started with this, and it'll only take a few minutes, um, and then I'll let you download my finished version so you can have a look if you're interested in this sort of thing. So the first thing we need to do, set up a list of daily words. Okay, so I'm just going to put a date in this cell, and I'll just fill down four days worth, but you could fill in a whole list, you know, a year's worth, whatever you wanted to. Okay, and then we need some words for each day. I've got a little list here. Got to be five letter words for the, for the wordle guess. Right, so then I need to turn this into a table, control T. My table has headers, click OK. And I'll just be sort of proper about this and I'll go to my table design and call it TBL words. You don't have to do that bit, but it's always good practice. OK, then I need to get today's date using the today function. And I want to look up today's word, so I'm going to use xlookup equals xlookup, that date, comma, in this list, comma, and bring back that word, enter. So the word for today is chart. Now I want to find different letters, so I need to split this word apart into its different letters. And you can use the sequence function for this, because sequence can actually grab the first, second, third, fourth, or it generates a sequence of numbers. Combine it with mid, so here we go, equals mid. So mid extracts letters um, from a piece of text. So there's the text. We want to start at the first letter and extract one, the second letter, extract one, the third letter. So sequence, okay, one row, five columns for the five letters. Extract one character each time. And there we go, five separate characters. Awesome. Right, this is the little grid where the end user will type in. I'm actually going to call this grid so it makes my formulas easier. Up in my name manager, call it grid, press enter. Let, let me just put a word in here. Let me let me try, you know, sum if. Uh, if. And also I'll actually put the right answer in this second guess. So I've just got something to work with in my formulas. So the first thing I want to check is is the letter in the right spot? So I can just do equals and highlight this, which does E3 hash, or I could just type that in, and then check if it exact matches this, the grid. And we get trues and falses. So if a letter is in the wrong spot, let's say I put a T here, doesn't pick it up, okay, that's still false. But if I put a T there, because that's the right spot, it goes true. So that's an exact match, okay? Then I want to find um, if it exists at all. So does the letter T, if I put it in the wrong spot? Um, so we can just count how many times the letter occurs. So count ifs, okay, highlight that little thing there, and then highlight the grid again, okay, and enter. So we've got the ones and the zeros, and if this time I put a T over here, there we go, we can see the one is there, okay. So then what we can say is, you know, just do some trues and falses. So if equals zero, then false, else true. Okay, and the last little step, and this is essentially it apart from one little tweak, is to flag, to flag ones and zeros. So green if it's in the, if it's true over here, yellow if it's true over here, 
and then at you know no just gray or whatever color if it's not one of those two um, so equals if this hash equals true then one otherwise if this hash equals true then two otherwise zero So we can then base our conditional formatting on that. So over here, back in the cells, I've got some conditional formatting set up. So all I did was I actually highlighted um, the cells and I said home, conditional formatting, new rule, use formula, okay, and then equals, and then scroll across here Click on that cell, and the important thing, get rid of the dollar signs by pressing F4 a couple of times. F4, F4, F4. That means that it'll look at W7 for that one, then it'll look at um, the next one, so W8, W9, and so on. Okay, and we're going to format that. Sorry, go back here. W7 equals 1. We want to format that with a green fill. Okay, and then I repeated that. I added new conditional formatting, did it for W7 equals two, and made it yellow. And if I want to quickly look at those rules, home, conditional formatting, manage rules, there they are. Okay, former W7 equals one, W7 equals two. And that's essentially it. The only issue that I just need to fix up, let's take back this, is that this currently lights up as green as I type the letters but I don't want it to show up until I finish typing the letters. So over here, okay, I need to add a little flag to say only flag it when it's complete. So unfortunately, I want to count blank, okay, count how many blanks are in this row, but I want to highlight the whole table, but you can't do this currently. With the insider version, there's the ability to count and array the rows at a time using by row and by col. Um, I'll put a link to my video on that, but I have to do this one row at a time. So does that equal zero? Okay, are there no blanks? So it's true, false, okay, but you have to copy that down. You can't build an array currently to do that. So what you can do then is add another conditional formatting first to say if this is false, then gray, and then stop the rule at that point, and then keep going. Okay, so let me bring back up the solution file. So let me show you a couple of extra features I added. I added this element, a little countdown timer to when the next word is available. If you download this file, you'll see how I did that. I also added this ability to show which letters have been selected once you've typed in. then it tells you that B and L. And this little graphic, and these are just dynamic graphics. I can move them around. They are linked pictures that are pasted. So download the file, check it out, check out the proper Wordle. Let me know what you think. It's a bit of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you later.